Hello everybody! In this episode we will talk about what you as a non-Swede must do to be able to legally hunt in Sweden. We will talk about which papers and applications you need to fill in, we will talk about how to legally bring your gun into the country and of course we will talk about how to find a decent hunting adventure in Sweden. So stay tuned! As a legal disclaimer, I have to say that this video constitutes no legal advice on gun laws or hunting laws in Sweden. Make sure to always check with the governmental sites for the latest updates on laws and regulations. I will have the links included in the description below. With that said, let's get started. First question you need to ask yourself is, do I want to bring my own gun? Why is that important? Well, personally, I feel more secure with my own gun. I mean, I know how the gun is performing, I know how the gun is aligned to the scope, I know the ballistics of my hand-loaded ammunition, and I know how I perform, and I know how my gun performs. So yeah, there's a good reason to bring your own gun to the country. But there might be a second reason for bringing your own gun. I mean, your gun, unlike my gun, might have been in your family for a very long time. There's a tradition and, and some history connected to your gun and that you might want to extend by your own experiences. So bringing a gun like that with a long history and tradition into a country like Sweden, doing your favorite hunting adventure here, might just add to the historic value of the gun in its whole. Either way, if you want to bring your own gun, there are certain rules and regulations that you have to follow. First of all, you have to ask for permission to import a weapon into the country. Apart from your own personal data, the make and model and the caliber of the weapon, you will have to also answer about the serial number and the amount of ammunition that you intend to bring. No, you cannot just take your gun and go hunting in Sweden. Secondly, you will need to have an invitation from your hunting host. And last but not least, you will have to include proof that you are allowed to carry this kind of weapons in your home country. For EU citizens, this is quite easy. You can just prove it by including a copy of your European firearms pass. For citizens of the US and other countries that do not explicitly issue weapon licenses, you will have to bring two additional certificates. The first one is issued by your host, thereby certifying that you have the marksmanship and the skill to handle a weapon appropriately. The second will be issued by your local police department and that will be a certificate of that you are a law-abiding citizen and that you are able to handle your gun. The good thing about Sweden is that almost everything can be handled digitally, so you will be able to send your whole application via email to the Swedish police. Please keep in mind that the police will have six weeks of working time before they can process your application, so make sure to send it in good time. Once the police have received your application, they will send you an invoice, which is currently 870 crowns or equal to 85 euro or around $100. Make sure to pay it in due time because they will not start working before the money has arrived. The link to the police documents will be included in the description below. Now where do I find a hunting host? Well, the easiest thing is to ask an outfitter to be your hunting host. I will try to include some links below in the description. But of course, there's also the possibility to ask a friend who's living in Sweden to be your hunting host. This might give you some other impressions of Swedish hunting life and of course of Swedish life in general. So it's worth trying that one. While waiting for the police to process your application, there are other things that you need to do. One thing is hunting insurance. Please check your existing insurance if this covers hunting accidents in Sweden. If not, or if you're unsure, there's always the possibility to join the Swedish Hunting Association, Svenska Jägerförbundet, for an annual fee of 300 crowns. 300 crowns is roughly 30 euro or 34 dollars. With this insurance, you will get an insurance coverage of 10 million Swedish crowns, which is equal to around 950,000 euro or 1.13 million dollars. You will also need to buy an annual hunting permit from the Swedish EPA Environmental Protection Agency and this will also cost you 300 crowns. Yes, both links to Svenska Jägerförbundet and the Swedish EPA are included in the description below. 
Once you have received your permit from the Swedish police, you need to finally declare your import of firearms and ammunition to the Swedish customs. Of course, you do that online. We are in Sweden, right? After the end of the registration process, you will get an email with a registration number. This registration number, together with a permit from the police, is what you need to legally enter the country with your weapons. When you cross the border, you will choose the green lane, nothing to declare. If you are stopped by customs, you will have to, of course, show those two documents, the registration number and the permit from the police. No problems there. I will include the link to the Swedish customs also below. So, that's it. Easy, right? Now you're in Sweden. Great! If you did not bring your own gun, you have two possibilities how you can hunt in Sweden. One of them is, of course, borrow a gun. If you have a European firearms passport or equal certification from other countries, like I explained earlier, then you will be able to borrow a gun that is equal to the guns that you are allowed to carry in your home country. The owner of the gun will have to fill in a certificate that proves that he borrows the gun to you. This certificate is valid for 14 days. The other possibility that you have is supervised hunting. In Sweden, every licensed and certified hunter is allowed to take a person from 15 years of age on on a supervised hunt. Supervised hunting will mean that you are borrowing the gun from your hunting supervisor and your hunting supervisor is at no time allowed to leave your site more than arm's length. This is to help you out in any tricky situation that might arise. When traveling with guns in Sweden, there are some simple rules that you have to apply. For example, if you take a break at a gas station and you need to take a personal break and leave the car, you will have to make sure that the gun is not visible from outside the car. The best place for this would be in the trunk. But additionally, you will need to remove the bolt from your gun and take it with you on your personal break. The same applies to shotguns, where you need to remove the fore end and take it with you. If you're going for a classical Swedish moose hunt, you might have to take the Swedish moose test. No, this is not a joke. Every Swedish hunter needs to pass this every year. It's not so hard though. You will be required to shoot at the moose target at 80 meters. First standing on the right side, one shot fired. Moving to the left side, one shot fired. Then turning around. Standing at the left side, one shot fired, and moving to the right side, one shot fired. All four shots need to be placed in a lethal area for the series to be counted. In order to pass the moose test, you need to pass three of these series, so a total of 12 shots. You can repeat this how many times you want, but at the end of the day, 12 shots, three times four series, have to be in the moose target. Now. Where do I hunt? Well, normally your hunting host should fix that for you. But there are so many different kinds of hunts in Sweden that this video will not be long enough to cover them all. Do you think I should make a separate hunting video about what kind of species and what kinds of hunt you will have in Sweden? Please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, there are a lot of good hunting agencies in Sweden and I will try to include some in my descriptions below. But there's also the Swedish Hunting Association, Svenska Jäger Forbundet, with their hunting yards, where they have good hunts for reasonable prices. And last but not least, don't forget about the Swedish forest companies like SCA and Holmen that are offering day tickets for small game hunting at a very, very decent price. So, that's basically it. Find a hunting host, get your papers in order, bring your own gun or borrow one, Find a legal hunting ground and get out and have fun. Weidmannsheil and Huitjagd.